So, in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, it is all right for people of the same gender to marry. They just voted, I believe it was the Supreme Court, uh, yeah, they just voted that uh, the overturning of a, or the denial of a, pro, of a, they wanted to vote, the people wanted, well the churches, wanted to vote, you know, against our, that, our right to marry, and it was turned down. And when they tried to appeal it, they, you know, the Supreme Court said, sorry, but it's a hu you know, we can't put human rights to a vote. Well, that's a big thing. I'm really happy about this. I mean, it's about time we get something like this. A little bonus. Actually, a big bonus. Not just a bone thrown our way, really, but a, a right preserved. doesn't make up for, prop for Proposition 8, but it does, you know, give us a little more legitimacy in the world. Finally, a human right. I don't understand myself what the issue is. But it's good that some that there's a repeal of that so that we can't that they finally someone stood up. I mean, they didn't stand up for us; they stood up for human rights. Because you really can't put our rights to a vote. In fact, it even says in the Constitution, in alien inalienable rights. That means you can't get rid of them. That means it's recognized as a central pillar of, well, not a government, but of existence. And that the very basis of our country is the support of those rights. A lot of people forget how big that is in the history of the world. We're really the first country of our kind. We, uh, well, they might have been fat, they might have been rich, they might have been slave owners. They were also, well, they were men who also felt that because they had vices and they were rich and fat and slave owners, they didn't have the right to make the rules. They had only the ability to set a course of set of guidelines and that our rights make the rules and that they are unchangeable and that they are the basic rights of all humanity. I mean, really, speech, separation of church and state, all that, big stuff. And it's good for, good, you know, especially right now for the LGBT community. If the church and state were not separate, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't have, you know, just won that little debate and kind of beat the nation's capital and have, uh, even if it's not their official sanction because they were voting on rights, not on us. It's still, you know, support from our nation's capital. And if the churches were in charge, it wouldn't happen. Now, it's just, it's kind of, it's just, it's not a start, it's a major step. We've already started. And it's a really wonderful thing to know. I, now, and there's a part of this that confuses me, and always will. And that's a part of the church. You know,
I don't understand that church today, and especially its attitude about, well, harmless life choices, you know? Because, yeah, you... While you don't choose to be LGBT, you still, how you express it and how you live your life through it is your choice. And choosing to be true to yourself especially when it doesn't hurt anybody and only has to do with you and your private life. I don't understand why it's considered a sin in so many places, why it's so easy to say that we do these horrible things. Because it's patently ridiculous. I mean, It's gotten so much better than it was. And still, we have to fight for our rights. I mean, it's tough to know that a lot of churches I can't go into because I wouldn't be allowed because I'm ungodly. don't understand it. I guess you have to start, you know, secularly with the everyday world, the waking world, and just change the laws. Because when it's, when it's legal for us to marry, when we're considered people, and you don't have to worry about having being treated differently in any way. That will change the way people think. And when the way people think changes, the way they express their faith changes. And then that faith will accept us. I'm not looking for legitimacy, you know, through the church. You know, I'm not even Christian. But I am a spiritualist. And I think it's high time, you know, someone, <laughs> I would love it if someone just took the Bible and the Quran and walked up to various religious leaders, took that book, handed it to them and said, read this. Read it. You know, we checked. You know, the message is love, right? You know, both of you guys recognize Jesus. There you go. What was in there? What did he say? Oh, yeah. You know, you forget all the other bullshit. Just love each other. Just love each other. That was it. You know, all the other stuff, words. <laughs> love each other. If you love each other, then, you know, you won't be so bad to each other. I mean, you always hurt the ones you love, but you're always there for them. So I guess, you know, the first step towards, I don't know, I don't want to say love, but maybe just, uh, life, being everyday people. We've taken that. And now we just have to, well, we have to live up to our own standards, don't we, boys and girls, and in-betweens. Because, you know, if we live in a way that makes rulings like this, live in a way that proves that we can have a marriage and live a life like anybody else, Eventually, the centers are just going to seem crazier and crazier because we haven't hurt anybody and we haven't been any different than they are. And sooner or later, they'll end up as just these little crazy fringe group that someone listens to. And then, so I wait excitedly for that day. And before, during, and beyond that day, I love you all. Bye.